This is Donkey, uh, a.k.a. Tom Hulkenberg. And that is Hans Zimmer. <laughs> Batman vs. Superman is a movie, if you analyze all the types of music that are in that movie and um, how it evolves and how the production is and how simple the Clark Kent theme is on a just a small piano and how grand certain scenes uh, with Batman and Superman are together, then how small it becomes for something else and then how crazy it becomes with Lex Luthor and how... A banshee tribal it gets with Wonder Woman. It travels through all these musical areas. I would say that is great about doing the superhero movies with Zack because it allows you to expand on on the music that you know, the music that you love, and the music that you want to want to work for this film. The, the amazing thing about what we composers get to do, we get to start off with a relationship with somebody who comes into our room and he goes. I want to tell you a story. You know, somebody is going to present this amazing story to you mm -hmm. and fire up your imagination, fire up your intellect, fire up your musicianship. And the way we go at it is, is of course, recklessly and 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 crazily, and 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 we try we try to figure out what the heart of the thing is, and we try to figure out how can we go and give an experience and allow an audience to feel an emotion. Um, not tell them what to feel, but to, to just open the doors so that the possibility exists that in your life, you know, after you've been working hard all week and it's been grumpy at the office or whatever, you can go to the cinema and the lights will go down and suddenly there's the possibility of having experience and feeling an emotion. Uh, no, I don't think it's a sequel. I think it's a development. Certainly with Superman... Um, we, you know, which, which to me always presents the, the heart of the movie, um, the humanity of it. That sort of stayed the same, or it's just, you know, it's just getting larger and asks bigger questions. You write the music for the first Men of Steel, right. and we didn't know this was coming. Uh, so, uh, you know, you watch the film, and you you think like, well, you know, uh, great job, well done. And then Zach starts to make this film, and you you try some pieces from the first film or leftovers in this film, and then we both realize, wow, it works way better in this film than it did in the first one. Yeah, and I don't, no, it's, an, it's not just an accident. I think there were some very strategic moments where Zach was able to use the shorthand of having us having established some themes for Clark Kent. It literally becomes an emotional shorthand in the movie. You know, you know where off you speaketh when you see that character and you hear mm -hmm. those piano notes. I tortured myself. Yeah, yeah. I you, couldn't help yeah, it. Yeah, you tortured yourself. Hans had a, had a, a legacy to protect, a very impressive legacy with, uh, with Christopher Nolan and with Christian Bill. When Zack was going to take on Batman in this film with a different Batman, uh, Ben Affleck, the natural response of Hans was it would be the best scenario for everybody in respect to everybody that we bring some flesh uh, blood in to deal with uh, with the batman side of things so i can stray i can stay true to the to it to the original legacy and also in respect to uh, ben affleck and Zach. instead of dividing the the work up which is like no, we that's did just it like together. A, yeah right. we did we just we just did it together and in that way we could help each other out uh on on moments where it's uh where it was needed not none of it none of it would have been written without the two of us being mm -hmm. involved in the same project i mean what one of the things for me was quite simply after having done the work with chris I just, I just didn't want to let them down, and I didn't want to let Ben Affleck down as well. You know, you do want to keep a certain form and a certain shape, etc., and you need to build on this. And some, sometimes it's just, you know, getting into it together with somebody else, you know, who just gives you a fresh perspective on things. We are expected to write a motif or something or the other that can go and transcend 
a few years of movies. And you realize that there is this grand plan that you know, we have to surf and um, somehow make sure that over there in three years' time, something we set up as a tiny little minuscule little motif um, resonates or pays off. We went through every cliche to try to find a sound for this, for, for Wonder Woman. You know, we did the tribal voices, we did everything. We had, we tortured every great singer. And suddenly, I remember this phenomenal cellist, Tina Guo, who, when you meet her, is one of the most polite, articulate, feminine, sweet. Sweet, I think, is a real word to mm -hmm. actually use to describe Tina. And then when she and she plays her cello, electric cello standing up, when she grabs that cello, she grabs it like a sword and everything changes. And you go, whoa, you know, hang on a second. And she wields that cello like, like a weapon. And I thought, there, there it is, there she is, you know, she transforms. And I, and I, wanted, it to, I wanted it to be a woman. I wanted a woman to make, you know, the, I wanted the banshee cry. I can answer this in two ways, but I'm going to answer it in just one way, and it's a very personal way. Can you just for a moment just let us enjoy this movie and not think about the future? Just for a moment, let us stop at this movie and go, we got through it, we're still friends. Hans didn't have a holiday for the last 35 years. I didn't have a holiday for the last uh, three and a half years. I, I want to yeah, enjoy it. And, and I'm going on the road. Yeah, he's going on tour. We're doing it the other way around, <laughs> you know. It's like I, I'm going and touring. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, now that everybody knows that Pandora's box has been opened and there's the possibility of doing these other movies, just on a strictly personal level, just we need to just be able to go, <sighs> we've gotten through this one relatively unscathed. Um, and I, th I yeah, to do it and, and just celebrate that for a moment. I, d I don't ever want to hold back on these movies. If I have to plan my life out for the next four or so years, I can't do that. I'm, I, you know, I, at the end of the day, I'm a rock and roller, you know, and it's like I need to plug the guitar in and make a loud noise in that moment. You haven't seen the movie yet, but you get to sort of do your own movie right now. And that, in a funny way, is a luxury. Just think about it, you yeah. know? Put on the old headphones and just go on an... Uh, let, let, let us take you on a journey. Let us take you on a bit of an adventure. Sometimes it's going to get a bit rocky. Sometimes it's going to get a bit dangerous. Sometimes you might want to have a couple of tranquilizers handy. But it's not going to be dull.